This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. You would think the scoreboard at SB Ballard Stadium would be ready to explode. Over the past three weeks, Old Dominion has scored over 200 points. That's 200 points. And then finally last week against Albany, the defense stepped up, holding Albany to just 10 points. It doesn't get any better than that. As the Monarchs look for their fourth win in a row tomorrow against Liberty, it's homecoming. Are you ready to dance? First, though, the Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder, and how happy were you with your team's defensive, defensive performance last week? I was very happy, Bruce, particularly after that first drive where Albany went seven plays, 82 yards, scored a touchdown. After that, we come back on the next series, get an interception. They ran 60 plays, Bruce, for a total of 238 yards and only three points for the remainder of the game. So our guys really turned it around after that first drive. I was very happy with that. Now, you have never finished a season unbeaten at home, but right mm -hmm. now you're 3-0 and mm -hmm. at SB Ballard Stadium. I know you love goals. <laughs> How important is this one? Oh, it's critical, Bruce. This is our fifth year as a program, as you know. And in our first four years, we've never been unbeaten at home. We're 25 and seven overall. But even back in that first year, 2009, we were six and one. Second year, 2010, we were four and three. The third year, 2011, we were six and one, Bruce. And the loss came on a fourth and 29 conversion by Towson. Then last year, six and two with a home loss to Villanova in the playoff loss. So we're three and zero right now. This is game four, and our players have that as a goal. We've been talking about that as a program. We want to reward the 12th Monarchs with an undefeated home season. Your fans really have to bring a little extra cash when they come to the games <laughs> because you have to buy a program if you want to follow the Monarchs. You played, I counted, 56 players Saturday. Right. Isn't that unheard of in college football? It's very unusual in this day and age, Bruce, of college football, but the uniqueness to this season where we're going up. We're moving from FCS to FBS. We're going from transitioning from 63 scholarships to 85. There's 49 new players on this roster and we're trying to get everybody incorporated in the roster. And what you've got right now, Bruce, is a, if you look at our 2D, 43 of the 50 total players, 22 offense, 22 defense, six special teams, 43 of those 50 are underclassmen. And even with that, all 11 seniors right now are either starting or contributing. So we're developing some roles right now. All right, before we get to Liberty, we talked about your defense. Mm -hmm. Your offense put up 66 points, but I know you you always find something that you want to improve on. Assignment, technique, and execution right now, Bruce. And what Coach Scott, our offensive coordinator, and our offensive coaches, and myself have explained to our guys, all we need to do is look back to the Maryland game where we didn't execute and we only scored 10 points and turned the ball over. So what we want them to understand is even though we scored 66 against Albany and we're happy, we weren't very good in our assignments, our technique, or our execution. We need to be better so when we play teams like Liberty, who's the best team we've played since Maryland, and like Pittsburgh in two weeks, the only way we're going to have success is if we're better in what we're executing. All right, let's talk about Liberty. Coached mm -hmm. by Turner Gill, they mm -hmm. lost to Kent State and Richmond, right. two very good teams. Mm -hmm. But they're going to give you a run for your money tomorrow. Yeah, what, what's interesting, Bruce, you can see the development now with this team. This is Turner Gill's second year at Liberty, so he and his staff – Last year, they won six of the last seven games. So now you see what's happening. The kids are learning. This year, they're three and two, as you mentioned, lost a 1A game on the road and then lost to Richmond by a touchdown, who we beat Richmond last year by a touchdown. So you can gauge that. I see improvement. I see a team that's well coached. Veteran players, Bruce, they've got on their two deep, Bruce, they've got 18 of their 22 juniors or seniors. So I expect this will be a good football game. All right, what a thrill for Old Dominion fans to get to see Albany coach uh, Bob sure Ford, was. who is retiring after 40 years. What a mm -hmm. legend he is, and he can mm -hmm. still coach. Oh, he sure can, Bruce. And when you think about this, when he became the head coach at Albany in 1970, I was six years old. You were on your 10th year of the job here. But let's <laughs> not go there. Me. I mean, the fact that what he's accomplished, uh, just so happy for him. And when we talked after the game, Bruce, just to have a chance to thank him for all he's done in coaching, all the coaches he's helped, all the players. He's truly one of the good people in the game. All right, I think one of the most <laughs> important plays of the entire season came early Saturday, You're Coach, right. when Falante uh, Misher came up with that big, big interception. It right. was so big, Coach, that Chris Rackley <laughs> went to practice to talk to him about it. 
<laughs> it's not uncommon to see Old Dominion safety Philante Misher going through game tape. The sophomore from Washington, D.C. is looking for tendencies and anything that will give him and his teammates an advantage on defense. Really just tell him mostly everyone what to do. You can see everything on the field. Call and make sure everyone in the same in the right spot. Misher has used his tape time wisely and leads the Monarchs in tackles, many of them bone jarring. Being physical, that helps me play my play the way I like to play. Because I like to turn make get um turnover. So, you know, I run up on a guy, may hit him, may make him cough it up, or I may take it out of his hand, try to do anything to get it out of there. This past weekend, Misher collected his first career interception, a big play, but one he got some help on from Malik Johnson. I really credit a lot to Malik because he played good defense. He, it just happened to get tipped up, and I just was running behind it. And uh, when, I, when I seen it go up in there, I knew I had to get it. And it was just like, my momentum was taking me to the other end zone, so I probably ran like 100 yards on the whole play on the game, 20 yards out of it, but it was fun. From leading the team in tackles to interceptions and fumble recoveries, Misher is having a great season. So far, he's living up to the lofty goals he set before the season. Personal goals, I, I, I would like to be All-American. That's, that's my only personal goal, but other than that, I want to win the rest of these games. Chris Reckling reporting for the Old Dominion Football Show. All right, Coach, how big was that interception by Falante last Saturday? Oh, that was huge, Bruce. As you and I talked about before we went on the air, they run a reverse pass, and you're just hoping someone's in coverage. Malik Johnson tips it. Falante catches it and then returns it. Big return, Bruce. The other thing about Falante now, he's our free safety. He's our leading tackler. He's developing into a leader of our defense as only a true sophomore. I'll tell you, a very important position. Mm -hmm. Big Nate Barnes from Newport News is one of the team captains, but does that give him an edge in this week's One Minute Grill with Brian Parsons? We'll find out. And we have a video question this week as we open up the mailbag when Coach Wilder answers your questions in the Coach's Court. Senior co-captain defensive lineman Nate Barnes has provided leadership on and off the field during his career, but does he have the experience to make it through the one-minute <laughs> drill with Brian Parsons? Let's find out. All right, welcome back to the one-minute drill. We have big defensive lineman Nate Barnes from Newport News with us this week. Uh, speaking of the one-minute drill, Nate, what is your least favorite practice drill? Uh, my least favorite practice drill would probably have to be the uh, pursuit drill. We just run in so much, and then we got to go into different other drills, and then that just that just starts it all, and that gives me real tired. We've got uh, some of the other guys have had some impersonations of some of the coaches. Uh, do you have anything in your bag of tricks? I think I can do a pretty good Bobby Wilder impression. I think right. uh, here we go. Let's hear it. Aim high for this one. Oh, hey, tough monarchs. We're back here again, Bobby Wilder. <laughs> How do you know when Bobby Wilder is uh, is upset at something? How can you tell? Because he's he's got the the PMA. Uh, yeah, he does got the PMA, but it just as I guess been around for so long, when he kind of grits his teeth and stuff, you know something not good, something something bad is about to happen. Have you played Old Dominion on the EA Sports video game? Oh yes, every chance every chance I get. Do you lead the country in sacks? Yes, I do. <laughs> What's the most embarrassing song on your iPod or our phone? It was a song Justin Bieber did with Drake. I think that might be the, the most embarrassing song that I might have up there. I don't think nobody knows I listen to Justin Bieber, but he's not that bad. <laughs> Nate Barnes, thanks for joining us on the One Minute Drill. Say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. All right, Monarchs, take it easy. Maybe he's been listening to Justin Bieber the last couple of weeks. Coach Nate has been out, but how yeah. do you look injury-wise with him and the rest of the team? Well, first of all, speaking to Nate, who's our senior captain, one of our four captains, Bruce, doing an outstanding job right now, developing leadership. Uh, we're going to hold him out again this week. He might be able to play, but I just don't feel comfortable with him being an interior defensive lineman having a knee injury. So we'll hold him out, get him ready for Pittsburgh. Uh, in three weeks. Other than that, Bruce, we've, we've got some bumps and bruises, but to be in week six of the season, we're very healthy right now. All right, that's good news. Still to come, Coach Wilder answers your questions in the Coach's Corner, and he gives us his priorities of the game for tomorrow's homecoming showdown against the Tough Liberty. Time now to turn it over to you fans lined up in the Coach's Corner. And Kevin from Norfolk asked Coach, how have the seniors that have seen their playing time reduced responded? 
Well, Kevin, that, that's a really good question. Of the 11 seniors we currently have, six of them are starting right now. Nate Barnes would be starting, but he's out with a knee injury, so seven of them would be starting. The other four contributing, special teams, different roles. The great thing for us right now is all 11 seniors are providing some leadership for the rest of the team, and they're all working to get better every week. Thanks for the question. All right, Robert in Chesapeake asks, what are your thoughts on the hot starts by both East Carolina and Maryland, and does it make you feel any better about those losses? <laughs> well, it, it, you never like a loss, but I certainly feel better about it. If you look right now, East Carolina 3-1, and one, coming off uh, a 55-31 victory over North Carolina. Remember, they only lost to Virginia Tech 15-10. to They're receiving votes in the top 25. Maryland 4-0 and right now. Last game, they beat West Virginia 37 to nothing. This past week, they had a bye. West Virginia turns around and beats number 11, Oklahoma State, 30 to 21. So combined, Bruce, they're 7 and 1 right now. That means we lost to a couple of good FBS programs. Thanks for the question. My name is Steve Bogelski. I'm from Virginia Beach. I love the ODU Monarchs. Coach Wilder, when it comes to your chicken wings, do you like ranch or blue cheese? I like them all. Give me hot, mild, ranch, blue cheese. Love the wings. Thanks for the question. <laughs> uh, your and yourself? Cooked. And I, yourself? I, I like the blue cheese myself. <laughs> okay. I assume that the hardest thing for a coach to do is to tell a player that he's off the team. Mm -hmm. You dismissed tailback Tyree Lee last week and mm -hmm. linebacker Caleb Taylor this mm -hmm. week. What can you tell us? Well, first of all, Bruce, it is clearly the hardest thing to do. Um, it's a gut-wrenching experience. You don't want to go through it. I've been in coaching for 26 years, seven as a head coach, and as a head coach, having to do that, it, it, you feel as if you've let not only the player down, but the program down. But as you know, and I know, we've got responsibilities. And you have responsibilities when you're in a position of leadership. And the student athletes know there, there's particular rules they have to follow and do. So those experiences are never anything that you enjoy doing as a coach. But from the standpoint of what happened with both uh, Tyree and Caleb, those are situations that will become life lessons. We're going to stick with them. We're still trying to help them because I want them to learn and grow and develop from these situations. All right, Coach, let's wrap things up. What are your priorities of the game for the Liberty game coming up tomorrow on this homecoming weekend? Well, the number one priority, we've got to win the turnover battle. We're plus six in our first five games, Bruce, in that turnover battle. Number two, control the Liberty run game. Right now, they're averaging 43 rushing attempts a game and 220 yards. That's impressive. Number three, first down on third down for our offense. Liberty only gives up 33% conversions. Those are the priorities this week. All right, Coach, tomorrow's homecoming game kicks off against Liberty at 6 o'clock, the fourth home game in a row. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Bruce. See you Appreciate next week it. on the Old Dominion Football Show. Thank you, 12th Monarchs.